Okay so I'm 14 and am often mistaken for 18 because of my, shape. Had to give you guys a little context. I was at the YMCA with my sisters, we were swimming for a while and then I started to feel sick. My younger sister said, you don't look good sis, maybe you should sit in the changing room for a while. I said, yeah I think I will. I went into the changing room for some peace and quiet, and lucky me no one was there. I sat on one of the benches and closed my eyes, a few moments later and I heard someone come in. It was a guy, tall, muscular and genuinely good looking. I brushed it off thinking he was probably waiting on his girlfriend and came to check on her cause she was taking too long or something. That is until he approached me and sat right next to me, so close our thighs were touching. I was really surprised, I scooted over and gave him that, what do you think you're doing, look. He smiled at me and said, don't worry girl, I'm not gonna hurt you, and proceeded to put his hand on my back. I stood up and backed away. I was scared to run because he seemed athletic, so he probably could have caught me. He asked me, how old are you, baby, in a sickeningly sweet tone. I say 14 and he nonchalantly says, cool. I asked how old he was, and he said, 23. He then stood up and started walking over to me and I backed away from him. This is the turning point, I hear a bathroom stall open, and there standing in all her glory was the lady who I'll call my hero. She stepped out and I knew she heard everything. That dude hightailed it out of there. The lady was nice and stayed with me for a while, her name was Stacy. Thank you Stacy. A little background for this story, I was about 10 years old at the time and my brother who was also 10, was taking swimming lessons at a public pool about 10 minutes away from our house. We would go to our lesson every Friday evening, and usually afterwards we would just chill in the spa pool until our dad was ready. On this particular Friday evening my brother and I were in the spa pool doing kid stuff and whatnot, when I noticed a man sitting directly across the spa from me just kind of staring at me. The spa is about 12 meters in length. The man was tall and thin, he had a very pointy nose and button-like eyes, he had very short, thin gray hair and his skin was unusually red. I did not think much of this at the time as I had seen this man around the pool before, and I think my dad may have even had a conversation with him at some point. But he continued to stare, and it made me so uncomfortable that I had to get out of the spa and sat outside waiting for my dad. I started seeing him everywhere. Wherever I was, he was. Grocery stores, malls, outside of my school and always at my Friday night swimming lesson. I never told my dad about seeing him everywhere, I thought maybe I was overreacting and I was very naive to the obvious danger. I remember one instance where I was at a department store with my mom, and I saw him down the end of every aisle we went down and said nothing. Red flags started to go off when he decided to carry a camera around with him. He would always be in a completely black outfit, with his camera bag around his neck just watching me. One day I was at the mall with a few friends when one of them pointed him out before I had even noticed him. I told them about the man and the way he looked at me, and my friend's older sister advised me to tell security so that he would be removed. As soon as he saw them coming he got up and left. Flash forward about two years or so, haven't seen my stalker friend for so long now he is becoming a distant memory. Until I get called into the school office because my uncle was here to collect me early, as soon as I saw him there, arms open, in my fucking school office waiting for me, I felt sick. I had forgotten about this man and two years later he had the nerve to come and try to get me out of school. And he has his camera. I marched right past him and to the office woman and simply said, this man is not my uncle, and walked back to class. At lunch he was outside my school, he would wave to try and get me to come over, or he would hold up a chocolate bar as some kind of child bait. So his random school appearances continue to the point the school needs to contact my parents and let them know the situation. My dad was distraught having actually spoken to this man before, and demanded the police be contacted so we could get a restraining order or something. That's when we found out. The man was a convicted sex offender. 
the police took his camera and found hundreds and hundreds of photos of me, some of which were zoomed up into my bedroom windows at my own house. We got a restraining order and thankfully I haven't seen him since. So, creepy stalker dude, I hope you are in jail. I learned to swim when I was almost two years old. To some of you that may seem odd, but we lived in Florida and nearly every community pool has swimming lessons for little ones. I remember my older brothers telling me it was to prevent little kids from falling in their own pools and drowning. Ever since then, I've loved the water. Well, clear water that is. I don't know what it was that founded my distrust for water I couldn't see into, maybe one too many Discovery Channel documentaries, or an unseen snapping turtle propelling itself onto my tiny fingers from murky depths. Regardless, every time I've been submerged in unclear water, my anxiety runs rapidly, picturing large, monstrous creatures with razor-sharp teeth, ready to drag me under with little effort. Moving north, Maryland to be more specific, was heartbreaking. Along with the horrific winters I had to endure, I had to come to terms with the fact that the only swimming I could do was in the unsettling community pool at the YMCA. By unsettling, I mainly mean questionably unsanitary. No more after-school play dates spent splashing in a friend's pool, no more weekend pool parties slash cookouts at my grandparents' house. And the beaches, nearby, well let's just say I never went past my knees on my own. Sorry, you probably don't care about my childhood pastimes and phobias, I'll get on with it. Fast forward 18 years from my first swimming lesson to now. I'm almost 20, back in Florida, and spend nearly every day in the screened-in pool in my backyard. There's something about being in the water that feels freeing. The chlorine, sorry, bleach, as the pool guy has to legally call it, rarely, if ever, hurts my eyes, so I swim without goggles, watching the water distort everything around me. I've only been back in Florida for about a week. I'm living with my parents while I save money to travel for a while. The thing is, I don't think I'll get the chance. It started two nights ago. My parents had gone to bed, and my uncle who's visiting was sitting inside, either reading or sleeping, I couldn't tell. I went out for a night swim, turning on the pool light, the porch light, and the kitchen light that shines through the glass doors to the porch, like I said, I have anxiety, and it doesn't just affect the clarity of water. I distinctly remember the time being 11.13, I had set an alarm for 11.45, as I wanted to get to bed at a semi-reasonable time. I turned on some music and waited in. The water was warmer than I thought it should be, but I chalked it up to the temperature difference in the air and welcomed the warmth. Our pool isn't that big, maybe 20 to 25 feet across and the deep end is only about 6 feet when properly filled. It's Florida, so heavy rain can add an inch or two. After about 15 minutes of back and forths, I decided to do a little diving. I don't know how many of you have pools, or how many of you have built-in lights, but ours doesn't seem to brighten the corners closest to the light. As I said, my anxiety leads to a slight fear of the dark, so I don't go to the sides regardless. Until that night. I must have slipped on some excess pool water, and my dive veered off to the left as I stumbled. I opened my eyes, slightly dazed, only to be met by a cloud of black. After a split second of panic I realized it was my own hair, and began to rise. Then it grabbed me. I don't know what, it, was, exactly, I was too scared to turn and look. And no, it wasn't a filter, it had a hand that clasped my ankle and made my entire body much colder than the water around me. I struggled as hard as I could, torn between trying to kick whatever it was, and not wanting to let it grab my other foot. I started to panic as I realized I was running out of air, thanks Marlboros. Within seconds I felt myself getting weaker, and within minutes I had given up. I let it drag me much further than the six feet my pool actually was. I don't know what happened next, I honestly think I started to die. When I woke up I was laying on the ground next to the pool, coughing up more water than I thought my lungs could hold. I have no idea how I got there, or when. As soon as I had finished heaving the last bit of water from my chest, I ran. 
somehow I remembered to grab my phone on my way inside, which, thank God. I don't think I'd have been able to go back outside if I had forgotten it. I looked at the time, wondering how long it has been unconscious for. It was 11.53. Given I was throwing up chlorine, sorry, bleach, for at least 5 minutes, the last time I remember being conscious was a little after 11.30. I'd been out for, give or take, 20 minutes. Somehow my mind flashed to Archer, little snippets of the show reminding me how unhealthy it is to be unconscious for extended lengths of time. But that was the least of my worries. I locked all the doors, although in hindsight, I doubt that did any good. I doubt whatever that thing was was human, or natural for that matter. I'd been sleeping on the couch, and I'm far too old to curl up with my parents without at least a barrage of questions, to which I knew I couldn't provide answers. So I resorted to kidnapping all my pets from various parts of the house, three cats and a Pomeranian, and quarantining them with me in the living room. The fear eventually let me pass out, and although I can't say it was restful, I did get a few hours in. Fast forward to the next day, yesterday, and I woke up to find my parents and uncle playing in the pool, blissfully unaware of the events that took place the night before. They were all fairly adamant about joining them, and what could I say? No thanks guys, I'm all swam, swam. Out, from the girl who'd spent the last week in and out of the pool like a regular in a whorehouse. I couldn't fake sickness without my mom, a lifelong nurse, testing my every claim, so with a lump in my throat I threw on my bikini and slowly waded in. The water was cooler than the night before, but still warm. Not needing more than a few seconds to adjust. It didn't take long for me to get comfortable, and within an hour I was once again enjoying the water and the freedom that came with it. But, when my family got out one by one, my anxiety kicked in and remembering the horrifying ordeal from the night before, I ran ahead of my uncle on the steps, not wanting to be the last one out. That night my mother and stepdad had decided to go night swimming, and while I was invited, they weren't as adamant as they had been earlier that day. I decided to stay outside and watch, just in case anything sinister were to happen to them, I could get help. But after a while of nothing, and having already stuck my feet in, I decided to go for it, feeling safe in numbers. And to my surprise, nothing happened. I got out before my parents and let their muffled happy laughter lull me to sleep. Around 2.30 am I woke up in a cold sweat. Not uncommon, I suffer from more than just anxiety, insomnia included in the list, and forgotten nightmares occasionally had me waking in sweaty shivers. What is uncommon is a dripping noise, coming from the back door that leads to the other side of the porch, opposite the kitchen. My heart sank and my stomach flipped. I didn't want to look. But I couldn't imagine what I'd do if I didn't. Get up. Go back to sleep. Those weren't possible so I turned slowly, ready to face what I was sure to be, the death I was meant to meet the night before. That's when I saw it. It was me. Well, sort of. It looked exactly like me, standing in the corner of the room, wearing my bikini, dripping pool water all over the floor. My just past shoulder length brown hair tangled and knotted in front of my face. My body is more white than I'd ever been, which was saying something given my more than fair complexion. But what set me off were the eyes. I have big, round, bright blue eyes, and they're always the first thing you notice. Well, I noticed them all right. They shone like lead headlights, cutting through the strands of hair that blocked the rest of my face. When it met my gaze, it started for what must have been a second, but felt impossibly longer. It opened its mouth and tried to speak, but what came out was a muffled gurgle. Like when someone tries to speak or yell underwater. As soon as it closed its mouth, it was gone. Suffice it to say I didn't go back to sleep. I have to admit, I don't think this thing is haunting my pool. My parents have lived here almost six months without incident. No, I think whatever this thing is, it wants me. But I won't be getting in the pool alone anymore, and I'm going to the library tomorrow to use their internet to do some research. There's also a church across the street from the library, and I'm wondering if it's worth going in. 
I just hope I find something in time because if this way of saying hello is to drown me, I don't want to finish the conversation. I grew up on the outskirts of a small southern town, and so I spent most days of my summer vacations prowling the woods close to my home. About a half hour walk from my house, down dirt roads and overgrown deer trails, there was a sandy stretch of beach along a creek. Since it was so far removed from civilization, and I had never seen another soul out there at the creek, I would often strip down naked and swim in the water to cool down under the summer sun. When I was a young girl, about eight or nine years old, I went down to my secret beach to go skinny dipping. I had spent all morning there, watching herons and splashing in the water happily. Suddenly I began to hear the sounds of something large forcing its way through the undergrowth upstream. I was frozen, standing naked in the middle of the creek as two men emerged from the woods. They were much older than me, probably in their thirties. Something about the way they were dressed scared me. Anyone who has spent a lot of time in the woods knows the danger of thorn vines and brambles, but these guys were dressed in flip-flops, cargo shorts, and wife beaters. They were filthy and covered in scratches across their arms and legs, looking as if hiking through the woods hadn't ever been on their agenda. I had left my clothes in an untidy pile on the bank, but to grab them I would have had to move much closer to the men. As I frantically tried to think of a way to get back to my clothes without alerting these guys, one of them turned and locked eyes with me. I grew up around southern manners. Seeing as I was a naked little girl trying to cover myself with my hands as I stood in the middle of a creek, I would have expected him to avert his gaze. But all he did was elbow his buddy in the ribs, point at me, and whisper something beyond my hearing. When they both turned and began to advance towards me, malicious grins on their faces, I officially lost my shit. Luckily, years of spending all my free time in the woods paid off. Forgetting modesty, I turned and ran at breakneck speed for the closest downstream deep channel. As I dove into the water I could hear the men yelling and splashing behind me, trying desperately to catch up. I had always been at home in the water, and at this moment I swam as though my life depended on it, which it very well might have. I knew exactly where I needed to go. Earlier that summer, I had discovered what I thought of as my secret hiding spot. The banks were rocky and sheer on both sides of the creek here, around the bend and downstream from the sandy beach. I had been watching muskrats swimming in the water, and had seen one swim through hanging kudzu vines into what I thought was solid stone. Upon pulling back the vines, and scaring the shit out of the muskrat in the process, I found an open space under an overhang of rock. I had always loved hiding, and was immediately smitten with such a perfectly camouflaged spot. But weeks later, in this moment, I thought of it as my best hope. As I came close to my hiding spot, I ducked down and swam underwater to my hole in the stone. I only surfaced once I was safely behind my curtain of kudzu vines. I waited there for several minutes, trying to silence my heavy breathing and slow my rampaging heartbeat, until I heard the sounds of heavy crashing through the underbrush. I screamed a little, but thankfully had clamped a hand over my mouth in time to muffle it. As the sounds of snapping twigs and rustling leaves got closer, I could hear the men panting and cursing under their breath. It sounded as if they were walking on the edge of the bank a few feet above me. After they had moved down a ways, I heard a thud on the ground and an angry yell, as if one of the men had tripped and fallen. Another voice shushed him, and said something that made me tremble. Shut up. She'll hear you. I had never been more terrified than at that moment. I cried silently, pressing my back against the rock and praying they wouldn't find me. Even after I heard their footsteps continuing down the bank and into silence, I remained hidden behind the kudzu. I stayed there, delirious with fear and shivering in the water, until the sun had begun to dip low in the sky. I finally began to make my way back to get my clothes and go home, picking my way along deer trails that would let me move as silently as possible. When I had gotten close to the beach, I stayed hidden in the undergrowth and watched for several minutes to make sure those two slime balls weren't anywhere around. Thankfully, although I found several footprints circling my clothes and pacing along the bank, the guys were nowhere to be seen. 
My shirt and jeans were still there, luckily, but my panties were gone. I threw my clothes on and ran the whole way home. I never told my mother about what happened at the creek, because I knew she would ban me from ever going into the woods again. I never saw those guys again, nor did I ever see anyone else down at that stretch of beach after that. But needless to say, I never went skinny dipping again. So two creepy men who would chase a naked little girl through the woods, let's not meet.